Pardon me. Do you have any gray poupon? No, I don't. But what I do have is the Lac Operon. What is the Lac Operon? It's a set of genes involved in metabolizing lactose, specifically catabolizing, right? A catabolism is breaking something down. So in order to break down lactose, we have to express certain genes that are enzymes that actually break up that sugar. So normally E. coli or bacteria, this is our uh, model system here, needs salt, nitrogen, and carbon. Generally speaking, glucose is the carbon source. That goes the same for our cells. The first energy source we always use is glucose. Before any other energy source, we would choose glucose, right? Glycolysis, it's the easiest way to do it. Bacteria are the same way. The enzymes required to use glucose are constitutive because they're almost always in glucose. You almost always need it. There'd be no reason to turn those off. If they're in a situation where there's no glucose, but instead there's the sugar lactose, right? That would be the sugar in milk or dairy products. Then they need to turn on the genes to metabolize lactose. Those are normally off, okay? So we have to turn them on in order to do it. The genes are therefore inducible because we can turn them on, and the sugar itself is the inducer. That's the switch that causes the next set of events to happen. All of these form the LAC operon. What is the LAC operon? Three different functional genes, LAC Z, LAC Y, and LAC A. Also, we need this operator named LAC O. It's a sequence. Anything sequence is considered cis regulation, right? A regulatory element. The repressor region, also known as LAC I, or the gene that codes for the repressor, right? This is constitutive. It always makes this repressor protein. It's a trans regulator because it's a protein that binds to a cis element, the DNA. So the protein is always trans and the DNA is always cis. When lactose is present, it actually forms allolactose that binds to the repressor protein and that stops the binding to the operator, which lets us do transcription. Okay, so it stops repression. So something binds and blocks transcription. If you remove it, transcription's on. That means the LAC operon is negatively regulated. We're going to walk through all of this. So here we There I was, there I was, there I was in the Congo. Okay. Very nice. Here we are, here we are, here we are in a cell membrane. This is just how things work. Here's our lactose up here. It needs to get in the cell, goes through this permease. This is actually lac Z. So we have to express this in order to get lactose into the cell. Once it's in, beta galactosidase changes lactose to that allolactose. That's what interacts with the repressor. The lac Z protein or beta galactosidase is what also breaks apart lactose into galactose and glucose. So then these guys can be sent down to glycolysis as usual. So here's the lac operon in the absence of lactose. So there's no lactose around. The cell is using glucose as it likes to. This LAC I gene that makes the repressor protein. So here's the LAC I gene. It has its own promoter. Remember, what did we say about this? Transcription and translation happen. It's constitutive. Okay, always on. So when there's no lactose around, we're always, always, always making this repressor. The repressor binds the operator, which is LAC-O operator. The promoter's right here. Here's the operator. And now no transcription can happen. What I don't like, of course, you know how I am. There's always things I don't like. RNA polymerase can bind to LAC-P, or the promoter, just fine. There's absolutely nothing blocking the way of RNA polymerase from binding there. So here, LAC-P is the promoter. 
and RNA polymerase binds there no problem. So what does that mean? That means no transcription. Something binds the repressor and turns off. Binding and off means negatively regulated. Yes? Yes. I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah, no transcription. So here is what happens if we are in the presence of lactose. No glucose. If there's no glucose and there is lactose, what happens is, of course, we, here's the promoter, here's lac I. We're always making this negative regulator. We're always making this repressor protein, right? This is constitutive. But now, when lactose is inside the cell, it's converted to the allolactose. That interacts with this repressor protein and causes it to not function. Guess what? It cannot bind. That, no binding. No. Just say no. Okay? That cannot bind there, which means RNA polymerase can totally bind. It's always bound before. It's on the promoter. It's nothing blocking it here, out of the way. Boom. It's going to go. We're going to get transcription and translation. We're going to make beta-galactosidase. We're going to make the permease. We're going to make transacetylase gene, which we have no idea what that does, but we don't care. It's made along, right, one big RNA and then three separate proteins. When these are made, then lactose can get broken down into glucose and galactose. So this, the presence of lactose is the inducer. It turns on the operon by... binding to the repressor itself and blocking it from stopping polymerase from doing transcription and translation. So here is a close-up of just the beginning part. Just lac P, right? Just lac P, the operator, right? This sequence is the operator, and then the lac Z gene, right? The very first. We're not showing the rest down here. And we're looking at the sequence because remember... What did we see from uh, the lecture captures on initiation, right? We have the sigma factor recognizes the promoter. The minus 10 and the minus 35 brings in RNA polymerase, right? That's there no matter what. The operator, as we can see here, doesn't block RNA polymerase from interacting at all. But it, when the repressor is sitting here, right? And so what does that mean? If the repressor is sitting in there, what's the deal? No lactose is around. So it's sitting there. It's blocking RNA polymerase cannot get at this sequence. It's supposed to start complementary base pairing right here, right? It's supposed to, right? This first base pair, this A, it's supposed to make a U. It's supposed to U, A, A, C, A, C, on, 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 in the mRNA, right? That would be the 5 prime end. This would be the 3 prime end. But this doesn't happen because the repressor protein, the brown guy, right here, is sitting in the way. RNA polymerase can't get at the sequence to complement your base pair. It's blocked. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. Yeah, you said it. So these next few slides are going to be about experiments done where they create a partial diploid organism so that they actually have two chromosomes. And that's just to look at the function of these different genes. So in this case, instead of only having one chromosome, right, remember one circular chromosome for the prokaryotes, they actually have two, at least of the things that we're interested in, like the lac operon. So one of the chromosomes has a normal repressor, and one, they actually created a mutation where this repressor doesn't work. It can't do its job. What is the repressor's job? to bind the operator and block RNA polymerase from going through. So what we see when we mutate only one of them, 
the active repressor is fine and it still binds the lac operon. In this case, RNA polymerase still can bind to the promoter, but it can't go anywhere because the lac operon is in the way. Pizza, pizza. Yeah, it's like that. It's a partial diploid. So even though our book says RNA polymerase doesn't bind, almost all of the recent publications out there suggest that RNA polymerase can bind regardless of what's going on at the operator, and that it's the repressor protein sitting in front that just doesn't allow it through. Um, there are some competing publications that suggest RNA polymerase cannot bind if the, the repressor's on the operator. Either way, when the operator is bound by the repressor, we do not get transcription. No transcription. Transcription is inhibited. And so this experiment is just telling us if you have two copies of the gene, one's mutant and one's active, right, it's a trans expression. It's a, it's a trans acting action because the good protein comes over here and binds. Right? The mutant protein that can't bind, well, it doesn't bind, but as long as we have some, it's okay. What do you think would happen in not a partial diploid? Right? What about this? This doesn't exist. All we have is this one right here, this mutant. What happens to transcription? Does the mutant bind? Hmm? Hmm? Does it? No, of course not. It can't bind. It's a mutant. It's not allowed to bind. So what happens? We Well, yes, that too. We get this guy not bound, right? Here's this little bean-shaped guy, the striped. He can't bind. He's all sad. Guess what happens? Yes, transcription. Okay, so if it's not the partial diploid, and it's just in a regular situation. We mutate, so we don't get a functional protein. No binding. Yes, transcription. Another example, what if it's in the presence of lactose? We have our, again, this is our partial diploid guy. Anytime lactose is around, what do we see? This guy doesn't do anything. He doesn't interact with lactose. He can't bind. He just sits there like a big fat loser. And this guy, ooh, interacts with lactose. Actually, allolactose, right? And can't bind, right? RNA polymerase binding just fine. Yes, yes, yes. We get expression. We get transcription. Um, they're telling us we had also um, uh, I don't know what the heck is here. Oh, we must have had a mutation. Oh, sorry. We had a mutation here in the LAC-Z gene also, so we get crap. But as long as one of them's good, we get good. Yay! I like it. That's really good. Ooh, yes, I do like that. Now, what about a sw situation in a another partial diploid, partial to N? In this case, we've created a super repressor. The super repressor can bind no matter what. Lactose or not, whether lactose is around, it still binds, which is means... <laughs> Yes, the super repressor binds no matter what, right? Binds to both. RNA polymerase still binds, but it can't go anywhere, right? Oh, I'm stuck right there, which means no transcription. So if this were our lac operon, and this is such a great drawing I'm, I'm very proud of, yeah, it's pretty awesome. If, right, this would be black eye makes the repressor protein, right, the bean-shaped guy. We'll color him black. He's good, right? If the promoter's working and, and black eye's working, right, this guy is going to come sit on the operator. We're going to have RNA polymerase sitting here, right? If the repressor... 
is sitting there, we get no transcription. Right? That's the lac operon just sitting around, right? The basics using this guy. And I'm telling you, lactose is present. Show where transcription happens. Okay, show me what happens at the lac I. Do we get transcription here? Do we get transcription here with lactose present? That you can please take a screenshot and upload to homework, I think, number, I have no idea, number something that I will put called lactose present. And this is due when also lactose absent. I will call it that. And it, again, will be under the November 3rd. So please, again, if we have lactose absent, do we get transcription here? What's happening here? Do we get transcription here? Take a screenshot and upload. And that's it for the lac operon. Stay tuned for the tryptophan operon. Release the hounds!